go with me back to a time in 2014. I'm sitting at my kitchen table, eyes glazed over after another sleepless night spent battling my good old friend, multiple sclerosis. I could have been falling into a, the warm embrace of caffeine, but instead I was deep in the thought, pondering some really big ideas about my favorite morning drink. While I thought caffeine was the answer for my MS symptoms like fatigue, it took me a decade to swing my thought process the other way. While caffeine's benefits can be significant in acute situations, it is crucial to recognize that chronic vasoconstriction can lead to negative outcomes. Now, after 20 years of wrestling with MS, I've learned to look at life a little differently. I mean, why settle for less when you could wake up to a bright, beautiful world of realization about the negative effects of caffeine has on my myelin? Hey, it's Dave. I see so much evil in caffeine. It causes vasoconstriction, the process by which blood vessels are narrow due to the contraction of smooth muscle cells in vessel walls. In the context of MS, though, persistent va vasoconstriction can exacerbate symptoms and lead to long-term damage. This is such a of out of the blue concept. It even opens my eyes. Vasoconstriction is preventing the clearing of the central nervous system, which is preventing remyelination. Someone get me a tiny lab coat. I'm going to do some science. Now, my original thought process was one for the ages. If niacin is a vasodilator, and studies have shown that niacin effectively clears myelin debris for remyelination to take place in multiple sclerosis, could the opposite be true? Since caffeine is a vasoconstrictor, does it prevent remyelination? The sheer complexity of that made my brain tingle just a little bit, like an electric shock. But this electric shock is a good one. You know, the kind of you get when you sip on that morning brew and suddenly feel like you could run a marathon. But then, reality hit me like a train. No groundbreaking answers here. A quick search yielded it. While caffeine does have vasoconstrictive properties, its precise role in the remyelination process is still a subject of research. Well, thanks for the info, Sherlock. I think we all could have guessed that one, right? So, I took a different tack and typed instead, how might vasoconstriction work against remyelination and multiple sclerosis? And let me tell you, the response was much more aligned with my thoughts than I even expected. Vasoconstriction can negatively impact remyelination and multiple sclerosis through several mechanisms. MS is like that annoying friend who shows up uninvited. Sometimes inflammation is needed for the initial demyelination, but it also plays a role in the repair, repair process. 
if blood flow slows to a trickle, constriction hinders the repair process. Ah, those precious oligodendrocytes. They require oxygen for, for survival. Chronic vasoconstriction can cause hypoxia, which is just another fancy word for not enough oxygen. So, what do they do? Limpy little cells with no energy to remyelinate damaged axons. Doesn't that sound like a very effective process? The cell linings of our blood vessels are like the bouncers of the club that is our blood brain barrier. They maintain order and keep things running smoothly, letting certain molecules enter while keeping the vast majority out. But hey, when vasoconstriction disrupts them, it's like letting in a bunch of rowdy party crashers they just want to stir up trouble and ruin the neighborhood. Imagine if your trash can filled up and no one showed up to take it away. That's what happens when reduced blood flow is in your central nervous system. Accumulating waste products can be toxic, turning the central nervous system into the landfill. In the ongoing battle with chronic MS, persistent vasoconstriction could keep you trapped in a vicious cycle of damage and repair dysfunction. It's like being on a roller coaster that just won't end. Up and down. Up and down except nobody can guess will ever stop. All of it is caused by not stopping caffeine. Vasoconstriction can have all sorts of nasty effects on remyelination and MS. It reduces blood flow, limits nutrient delivery, and disrupts immune function and the overall health of the central nervous system. It's like a triple it's like a triple whammy. Further contributing to ongoing neurological disability. I've already rambled on about reduced blood flow. But here is where it gets really juicy. The more I think about it, the more I get miffed by caffeine. That pesky little ongoing vasoconstriction may contribute to a cycle of damage and repair dysfunction. Phrase? Oh, that really strikes a chord with me. For the general population, a piping hot coffee might not be a ruckus. But for us, the members of the MS Club, we need to rethink our caffeine consumption because it might be thwarting our chances of beating this disease by blocking remyelination. Caffeine's vasoconstrictive powers can lead to the accumulation of metabolic waste products, wreaking havoc and stopping those sweet recovery processes necessary for remyelination. It feels as though we've been in a toxic relationship this whole time. Caffeine was the gateway to a dreaded cycle of fatigue and frustration. At one point, true, I even made a video where I pondered the ups and downs of caffeine titled, Is Caffeine Good for Multiple Sclerosis? I'll add it down. Actually, you know, I'll, I'll stick a card up in the corner here if you want to watch it. Guess what? Turns out I might have been on the right track. Back then, my focus was on adenosine levels, while the real MVP was just waiting to be recognized. Vasodilation. 
but am I the only one feeling the effects? I bet I'm not alone in this caffeinated conundrum. Share your thoughts down in the comments. Now let's talk about niacin. Taking it can bring about incredible benefits. Believe me, most of that credit goes to niacin, but hey, factors like weightlifting, fasting diet, UVB radiation, iodine supplementation, and I'll say it again, sleep are essential in making niacin work better and faster for us. And it, it's a roundabout thing, like, because I'm taking niacin now, my sleep is getting better. So weird. The speed of recovery matters big time. Years ago, I just popped a niacin pill and gone about my day. I might not have understood the benefits. But now, thankfully, I recognize the essentials that propelled me forward. Thank God I ditched my previous coffee routine that had my body buzzed like a gecko on a hot rock. I was gulping down this concoction that was basically a supercharged shot of caffeine with an extra two scoops of grounds just to feel like a functional human. That, can, that caffeine fueled facade was all in a service of keeping me awake and alert to battle through the fatigue that seems to roll over us MS warriors like a freight train. It was like trying to f fight off a hungry bear with a toothpick. It just didn't work half the time. And let's not even get started on the notion that many of us with MS swear by caffeine to combat the relentless fatigue we experience. Sure, it can feel like a lifesaver in the moment, a temporary surge of energy that helps you pull through those heavy eyelids. But herein lies the big irony. The very thing that might be saving our bacon could be the catalyst for an ongoing cycle of damage. It's like a paradox wrapped in a riddle, tucks, tucked inside a conundrum, all topped off with whipped cream. While vasoconstriction comes with those temporary perks like a quick boost of focus and alertness, it seems to slap us with the long-term consequences. Just consider this. When blood vessels tighten, our bodies can cleverly redirect blood flow to the parts of us that need the most at that moment, like our brains and our muscles. Oh, but that does sound, sound smart, right? But this maneuver could also cut off the vital nourishment to repair our damaged myelin and clear out cellular debris. So, talk about a toxic relationship. So yes, my dear MS comrades, this is the battle we face short-lived benefits or long-term recovery. I can almost hear your internal struggle screaming to me, why can't we have both? It's a true tug of war where only one victor walks away with the morning glory. But let's hit pause for a second on this caffeine drama and dive deeper into something that keeps bubbling up in my thoughts. The idea that we need to promote our remelination. It's not all doom and gloom, my fellow MS warriors. What if we shifted our focus 
from caffeine to nourishing our bodies in ways that truly support us. Imagine instead staying focused on nice and The benefits will soon come your way. Combine that with good old fashioned exercise and those meals filled with leafy greens. We might just give our oligodendrocytes a fighting chance. It's, it's almost as if strict diet filled with the right nutrients and heavy lifestyle could be the transformation we need like a team of superheroes coming together to save the day from our, for our nervous system. So I'm prepping up my essential elements and observing how they interact with niacin in my regimen. Forget about caffeine, just forget it. Hello to niacin. As, I, as you might navigate these waters, you're going to be left with some thought-provoking questions to ask. So, I have my own question for you. I'm thinking about doing a live question and answer session, possibly on the weekend sometime, but I need some of the questions from you guys that are burning in your mind. Write them down to me in the comments. I would love I would love to start doing live streams and answering all your questions. Thanks for tuning into my caffeine crazy nice and obsessed reimagination revelation. If you found this video helpful or even mildly entertaining, please share it with others. Remember, knowledge is not just power. It's a lifeline we can pass along to others. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss a video. So until the next one, guys.